If your diet and fitness goals start well, but then quickly fall apart, this video is for you. I'm going to give you three strategies to help you make them stick this time. Let's get cracking. Number one is physical activity. And the biggest mistake a lot of people here make on their new fitness regime is just going too hard. Stop going for gold on your new you workout and start to settle for bronze. And yes, this may sound like a loser strategy, but maybe this time you should focus on being consistently good for a long time rather than brilliant just for a few days or weeks. We've all been there on a new regime up at 5 a.m. when every same person's asleep for an hour's journaling and then jumping on the assault bike and nearly killing yourself and then announcing to the world that you're never gonna get tired of this and four days later, you just can't stand the sight of any exercise. It's just completely unsustainable. Treat it like a race where there's eight versions of you. Now, number eight you is drunk, covered in cheese puffs, shouting at the TV, and it's 11 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> Let's save that version of you for breakups and bereavements. And then there's number one you, it's chiseled, abs, People can't get too close to you in case they cut themselves on your sharp edges. However, you're drinking mineral water on your birthday and your favorite subject is 47 ways to cook kale. Maybe consistently best you is actually third place you. Bronze you aims to eat pizza perhaps once every two weeks, but accepts that you're gonna eat pizza once a week. Bronze you thinks they're gonna work out five times a week and plans it, but maybe settles for three or four times a week. Bronze you knows that consistently good enough is actually good enough. And as soon as I adopted this thinking for my workouts, I now actually look forward to doing my workouts. Workouts aren't something that I have to do, they're something that I get to do, and I really enjoy them more. The old me was a wheezing sweat fest, and I just used to put them off. And it's also important to do things that you love. My friends like squatting in a squat rack, this does not excite me. It looks dangerous. I know that it's not, but it looks dangerous. And I just don't like the idea of lifting heavy weights above my head. So I just don't do it. If I put squatting into my uh, regime for working out, it just wouldn't happen. I enjoy working out with dumbbells, so I use those instead. And that keeps my workouts consistent. And also, don't be afraid to pay for workouts. Yes, you can go onto YouTube and find lots of free workouts to do, but you'll be kind of fumbling around for them. Apple Fitness Plus, for instance, is just 79 for the whole year, and Peloton also have some really good deals on for their app. And that's the best places I find for strength, mobility, yoga, and also meditation workouts. Number two is time management in the rest of your life, because this can have a really significant impact on your diet and your fitness. And this falls into two categories. So category one is a type of person who does things when they're important and urgent. So for example, uh, you've got that report that's due Friday morning, it's Thursday night. <laughs> you wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning, realizing that your car insurance ran out at midnight. Uh, the next night, you're so far behind that there's no healthy food in the house and you settle for eating junk food. You'll have a much better chance of success if you do things when they're important, but they're not urgent. Let me explain. So the same report is due Friday, but you've already done it on Wednesday. You know there's healthy food in the house because your food delivery service delivered your weekly food on the Monday. You've also got a much better chance of doing your workouts because they're planned into your day, ideally as early as possible, and they're scheduled so nothing else can interrupt them. There will be a hump to get over when going from being on the back foot to being on the front foot, but it's worth it. I batch make my overnight oats so that every morning I know that I've got a breakfast that I haven't got to worry about making, and when I pull the last one out of the fridge, I make the next batch. I also, if, I'm, if I need a snack, I will reach for something like a protein bar rather than my son's homemade cookies. I mean, these are delicious, but I know that if I eat one of these, I'll end up eating all three, whereas if I eat one of these, that will just keep me going. The goal here isn't to be perfect. It's to get things right most of the time and also, you know, accept your weaknesses. If I've got 20 guests coming and I'm cooking a brisket, I'm hoping that five of those people are vegetarians because I'm eating for several people. 
Next is your diet plan. The important thing is to find a way to eat that suits you. When my kids were little, all they would eat was spaghetti bolognese with cheese on. And um, <laughs> I thought I liked spaghetti bolognese with cheese on. But after you're eating it for four meals a week, and I'm walking around, and I'm bloated, and dairy gives me eczema, so I'm an itchy, bloated mess, I don't really want to eat it anymore. But if you put me on a high protein, low carbohydrate diet with no dairy involved, then I'm craving somehow a carbonara, things that wouldn't normally happen. And also, if you block things out of your diet that you actually like, are you prepared to go for the rest of your life without eating that type of food because it's on your new diet sheet? It doesn't sound like much fun, does it? My point is, as always, is balance and don't try to be too strict on yourself. Here's three ways to eat, which should mean you're not making too much of a sacrifice. I'll start with the hardest one first. And as always, don't start any exercise or eating plan without checking with your doctor first. I'm not a nutritionist or a PT, and everything I tell you here is purely from my own experiences. The first one is intuitive eating. And this is basically to eat what you want, when you want, but not what your eyes want what your body wants. Sometimes you might want a pie, sometimes you might want a salad. Believe it or not, there's a quiet little voice in there which will tell you exactly what you want to eat. The reason why I find this the hardest strategy is because that little voice in there telling you exactly what you want to eat is very quiet and sometimes a little bit vague. And in addition to that, in our lives, we are just bombarded with adverts for food, aren't we? And companies don't make money from you being healthy. They make money from you eating food. And they're also much better than nature is of creating that bliss flavor point. You can generally eat more donuts than you can apples, can't you? And there's a reason for that. This method takes the most practice, but it is the most natural and is really quite rewarding when you start to get in the hang of it. Some really good resources here are Intuitive Eating by Evelyn, Evelyn Tribble, I Can Make You Thin by Paul McKenna, and You Can Be Thin by Marissa Peer. Next is calorie counting. So this can be good because it adds, adds structure to your day. No foods are off limits, and you just set amount of calories to eat for the day, and then that's how many calories you aim to eat. My Fitness Pal is a great app for logging food, and if you find yourself eating too much one day, then you can also, you can always adjust it by eating slightly less the next day. Something I do when calorie counting is I will eat less in the week to leave me with more calories to eat at the weekend. The downside to this is you have to track exactly everything that you eat for it to work, and your mum's Sunday dinner might have a different set of calories involved than your own Sunday dinner. It's also important to remember that not all calories are created equal. 250 calories worth of chicken will probably keep you a lot fuller than 250 calories worth of M&Ms. My biggest tip here, if you're calorie counting, is not to go too low. Many of the apps, including MyFitnessPal, will give you a calorie figure which just isn't really achievable, I don't think, in the long term. My advice would be to log on to the website calculator.net where you can put in your height, your age, your activity levels, and tell them how much you want to lose each week, and that will give you a really healthy amount of calories to eat in the day. I generally will try and lose, if I'm losing weight, maybe one to two pounds a week. No more than that, because I find that your body has a thermostat. So if you turn the temperature down too much, your body will start to react and it will increase your appetite to bring things back to the status quo. So if I lose, if I aim to lose a pound a week, then that still gives me somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 and calories a day to eat. And my body doesn't really notice that gradual decline. It will be much more manageable. And would you like to lose 10 pounds in two weeks and then quit because it's too extreme? Or would you like to lose a pound a week for a whole year? The next thing I use is intermittent fasting. So this can be quite flexible as well. Some people prefer a 5-2, which means they eat normally for five days a week, and then they eat a heavily restricted amount of calories for two days a week. This is a little bit too extreme for me, but might work for you. I prefer a 16-8 approach. So that means that I will eat for eight hours a day, and I, not for eight hours continuously <laughs> a day, but I will eat within an eight hour window and then I won't eat for 16 hours. So for me, that looks like um, when I wake up, I'll have a large glass of water by my bed, 
for breakfast with the family. I'll have a large glass of water then as well. And I'll probably have my breakfast around 10 or 11 a.m. I'll also have my lunch, I'll probably have a snack, and my final meal, my dinner, will be between 6 and 7 p.m. So my eating will be generally within an eight or nine hour window, and that cuts out all the snacking in the evening. It gives your body a time to kind of digest the food and rest and do other things. And it's probably the easiest out of the lot. At weekends, I don't do anything, just eat normally. I kind of keep this Monday to Friday so it's not too intrusive on my life. With all of these, hydration is really important and along with resistance exercising. So I don't think this is kind of talked about enough, but if you're losing weight, you will be shedding fat and also some muscle. If you've lost the same 10 pounds five times, although you may be at the same start weight as you was on try one, you're probably a little bit flabbier if you haven't been working out as well. The reason being is on the way down, you're losing that little bit of muscle, as I've mentioned, and on the way up, you might not be gaining that back. So in conclusion, just be kind to yourself. I'm sure you're a very nice person, and Bronze you is a winner. Gold you might only be temporary. And also, have realistic goals. I always wanted to look like Wesley Snipes in the first Blade movie, but it's probably not gonna happen. And as fitness expert James Smith says, quite often swimmers don't look like they do because they swim. They generally swim because they look like they do. So if, I mean, I'd also like to be heavyweight champion of the world, but I'm five foot seven, 175 pounds and nearly 50. I mean, it's probably too big an ask. And the last thing I would say is be patient with your results. Remember that the tortoise always beats the hare. Until next time, see you soon.